Fox News uh, doing a quick interview with this with this guy who was sitting outside his house and there was a mob of people just protesting around the mayor's house of the mayor of D.C. and very rich area, very rich neighborhood. And um, Fox asks, asks this uh, this white guy, like, hey, what do you know? What does this mean to you? Like, why do you think these people are doing it? And he even goes, you know, somebody who's one super rich living in a very good, well off neighborhood. And he understands what's going on. He's like, yeah. well, you got a bunch of people who are out of jobs. There's no there's no end in sight. We have been, you know, I'm just kind of generalizing what he said. But, you know, we've been in lockdown. People are starving and hungry and nobody's doing anything to help their lives. And then on top of that, like you said, is the last straw on the camel's back. Yeah. That you kill a guy in plain sight for eight minutes, eight for over eight minutes, you kneeling on his neck. He's telling you he can't breathe and your hands are in your pockets. Yep. What do you expect is supposed to happen? And yeah. like Fox, because <laughs> you know what Fox is, Fox yeah. being Fox, they're like, okay, well, thank you for your opinion. Like they didn't know what else to say after that. Yeah. And it's just crazy. Yeah, I was uh, trying to explain it to one of my friends at work too, because he's like, "What does the looting, you know, accomplish?" And me, I'm not. A, I would never be a looting type dude. I'm not burn down the city type dude. So, um, so for me, it's, it's not for me. But I was just like, I don't get. I understand you don't. I understand your confusion. But what they're going through is they feel like the, whatever the system is doesn't work for them in any way. So now they're just like on some fuck the system shit. So they're not on some. Oh, let's just keep doing. Let's let's protest this one more time, and then let this happen again um, another month. This is like no, we're ending this right now. Like this is like they're trying to have a whole ass revolution, and it seems it seems like in a lot of ways it's working, man. I'm seeing a lot of companies I never would have thought would uh, post up like the NFL. That's what that's a yeah. super conservative uh, company, and uh, I remember I saw all the quarterbacks came out and they were talking about Black Lives Matter. It was like uh, Deshaun Watson and Mahomes and stuff like that. A couple other players, I think it was like nine players. It did like a whole commercial. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. And then I saw Goodell come out and say he was wrong, which, man. I mean, I saw people Dude. people would, yeah. would jump on his back like, oh, we don't need this now. This is too late. Dude, the, the, to come out and say you were wrong about something four years after the fact, you know wow. how much you have to like push your pride aside for that? Yeah. That's, and it wasn't, that was huge. That was yeah, huge. That, that shit's crazy. Like it wasn't like the Drew Brees apology to where – you know, you make a mistake and then, you know, you meet up with your media team and then the next day you apologize. You know, I can see somebody thinking that's not as sincere. But there was no need for Goodell to back off. He has all the money. Everybody's watching the NFL. People swore and down. They were boycotting the NFL last year. Ratings are, th- are through the roof. So people were still watching whether yeah. they said they were or not. Yeah. He has no reason to make that move. And even he was like, yo, we, we messed up on this one. So we We're on the wrong side of history. Yeah. yeah. That's that that alone speaks volumes. Yeah. But other companies that are just constantly putting out these these letters saying, you know, we're taking the time to educate ourselves. It's like there's a movement. It's a big and it's, movement. It's, it's progressing. Uh, uh, there's going to be a Black Lives Matter car on the next uh, NASCAR. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's, gonna, it's a whole ass car. I think, it, I think it has a black fist on it, but it definitely has hashtag uh, Black Lives Matter on the back fence. Wow. Yeah. You know, they, um, they, NASCAR also banned the Confederate flag. Yep. I saw that today. I was loving that. <laughs> so things are changing, dude. And it blows my mind how, how, once again, you still got that other side. And you got people talking of, um, well, what, my, one of those things that, I mean, it, the, it doesn't matter what topic you're talking about, but they always make it an extreme. Yes. So you hear, you hear the term defunding the police. And the extreme is like, okay, don't call nine one one. Yeah, like yeah. That, that that's not what defunding the police means. And that's just recently that I, I've been finding out what defunding the police actually yeah, means. Actually, I don't know anything about that. I saw the headline and I was like, what in the hell is going on? What, what's going on so, with that? So what's really cool is, um, my wife she, Arlene just kind of so she was a criminal justice major yeah. in college, and she was kind of just telling me how they while she was doing her classes, they did, you know, what, what funding the police actually means. 
and what defunding the police means. Yeah. And so she started explaining to me like defunding the police means reallocating the funds that the police get because they get an egregious amount of money every year. Yeah. Almost the equivalent to what the military gets. Oh shit. Like like if you were to if the military were the police and if the military were the police and our country was a city, that's how much the police get. Oh, it's okay. a crazy amount to the point where they're militarized. They have tanks. Yeah. You know, they have like a, yeah, never been a, fan of a that. crazy arsenal of of things that civil servants shouldn't have. Right. Yeah. So defunding the police basically means reallocating a lot of those funds into um, trying to help solve the solve the underlying problem instead of attacking it when, you know, so pretty much. That'll go to social workers. Okay. It'll go to it'll go to um, psychologists or um, mental health kind of kind of uh, centers, yeah. or even um, what is it called uh, community centers? Because for the most part, the most places that need those those things are the under undereducated, underprivileged, underserved areas of yeah. major cities, and it just so happens they're also the number one people who get the most altercations and the most crime yeah, in those places. So instead of just giving money to the police to lock more people up like drug abusers yeah. or drug pushers or people who have mental health problems or the homelessness problem, it'll go to shelters. It'll go to people to help them better their lives rather than continue living the way they're living and just get policed. Uh, and it'll also, it'll also go to like, certain certain areas where you have like a community watch so they police themselves in a sense but it's not it's not the extremes that people are saying like oh you defund the police it doesn't mean you're disbanding the police yeah that's that's how everybody's treated is that they're disbanding the police okay exactly Uh, i want to see how that works out yeah but apparently in la they just did it oh yeah yeah, L.A., the mayor, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. I don't think I'm too wrong, but. Yeah, I heard I uh, L.A., Minnesota, and possibly New York. Yeah, New York is, they're still working on it in New York, but definitely L.A. and I'm pretty sure Minnesota, they, they defunded the police. They're passing, like, some laws. And it's like, the first thing you shouldn't be doing is militarizing people yeah. who don't have, like, the amount of training. Yeah, you yeah, don't, absolutely. The, the amount of training to be. You need more training to be a lifeguard than you do a police. Dude, the funny thing is, is that I always hear people bring up the issue with training with cops. And the thing is, I don't even think it's training most of the time. Like, I literally think it's just the culture. It's a culture. And then just you feeling like you're like, I I run this, which I guess is a kind of need to have. You can't walk to a situation like all humble and stuff like they need to, you know, walk in and control situation. But these guys all perfect example. When you were, did you watch that video where that dude got the knee to the neck? Yeah. Okay. I found that incredibly hard to watch. So I skipped around for a couple, just a couple minutes where I couldn't really watch the whole thing. Um, when you heard the people pleading to get that man's uh, knee off his neck, you could see it in his face where he was just like, I don't take orders from you. That was his attitude. Like, he legit may have moved at some point. But yeah. just because somebody says something to him, he's he like, he doubled down. Nope. He, doubled Exa- down. he doubled down. And so that's not training. That's an attitude. That's a culture. That's a, you don't tell me what to do. I do what I want. And that's exactly what that is. And that's what I'm seeing whenever I see, uh, I was posting videos about, um, I think I posted two videos before any of this shit happened. I'm just kind of just fucking up people in the street. You know, it's just like, it was one where they had this dude handcuffed. And uh, he was, like, against a fence, and the cops was just, like, punching him in the ribs and smacking him in the head and stuff. And it was just, like, I mean, like I said, he, at least he didn't die, so it wasn't as serious or anything like that. But it's just, like, this is what this dude thought was cool to do when he thought nobody was recording him. But somebody was recording him from a second story of an uh, apartment building. And it's just, like, that's not training. He wasn't trained to do that. Yeah. His police chief didn't say, hey, you know, step number two, if they're getting mouthy with you, just, you know, start putting hands on them. You know, like, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. That's not I mean, training. He- just like we said, we go back to the riots or the protests. Yes, and, yes. And they're inciting violence. Like most yes. of the violence that we're seeing is incited by the police because they can. Yeah. Not because and that's, people and that's when it's because we can. Yeah. So yeah, I, like then, I, said, I don't think it's I don't think it's a uh, an issue in the way people think it is. I think it's an issue of 
personality types above the law culture. That's what the issue is. So you can train these dudes all you want to. Yeah. But I mean, I think also the uh, annual psyche vows, you know, yeah. a lot of cops deal with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff that a normal person shouldn't really be dealing with. But you, dude, you've been on, dude, you know that shit don't work. What, psyche vows? Yeah, when we come back and they give us those post appointments, and everybody's oh, yeah. like, I mean, yeah, if I if I answer this truthfully, they're going to want to question me, so I'm just put no. Yeah, for sure, this. but I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of, too. yeah, so, I mean, I agree, for the yeah. most part, but there are, there are going to be some where you can also wean out, or you can tell, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think, I, only reason I seriously doubt it, and I don't know how every police department is, but I've had a couple of friends try to go to be like police officers and they didn't pass like the initial psyche valve. That's like something you kind of got to get ready for. If they figure out how to pass that, they're going to pass. Gotcha. They're, they're not going to get caught up, bro. It's not going to happen. And then well, you know how then, to, you, like I say, you've been a part of a, uh, like an agency, you've been a part of the Marine Corps. You know how it is where if somebody did something before you and they beat it, they're going to give you that advice. They're going to tell hey. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right. They're going to yeah. give you that advice. So I think it's, I think it's very, I think it's aimed in the right direction. Like those type of things. I just don't think they're going to work because yeah. you're not going to sit up, answer those questions truthfully and risk yourself losing your job or having them take your gun away and give you a desk job. That's probably what would happen. They probably wouldn't fire him for like being yeah. a little like, oh shit, he's seen some shit that's fire him. They're going, like, hey, you want to take your gun away? I'm going to sit you down. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to answer those questions truthfully. So I yeah, feel like that's just like a lot of, like a lot of fluff that they going to do. They definitely got to change that culture. They got to change the culture, man. They have to. For sure. That's, um, but whatever it is, they need to put something in place where they can. I mean, I don't know. Just for me, I think they should treat them, treat them how the way we get treated in the military, which is we have to bend to the regular law that every civilian has to. But then we can get, we can get punished twice for the same offense. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody knows they got a DUI out, out in town. They have to deal with the regular DUI out in town, and you're paying for that. And you're going yep. to I'm whatever the hell the city wants you to go to, whether it's uh. Whether you sit in jail for that night, you get out, you bond out, pay for a lawyer for that, and you know whatever you have to do with that. Uh, DUI classes, uh, alcohol is anonymous. I heard some guys have to go to that if they had the DUI, and then turn around and you still you <laughs> you double jeopardy. You getting uh, charged by the military, and mm-hmm. that's gonna be reduction in grade. That's gonna be in your barracks room for it. even if you live out in town. It's gonna be going to a barracks room for forty five days. You know what I'm saying? No reenlistment. Ro- no reenlistment. Like. We may just kick you out because you had a, a prior offense to this. Yeah. So I think if they, because uh, when they pull a couple of these cops rap sheets, they keep having like all these complaints against them. And the complaint is whatever, because some people can, you know, be kind of picky and they know they can complain on you, get you in trouble. They may, they may do that. But they're, they're involved in too many things that went wrong. Yeah. Like, like, well, there's well, a why, pattern. Yeah. Like, why does this dude Which have in nine, this case, why does this dude have nine offenses? Yeah. And then he killed somebody, and now like y'all getting rid of him. like y'all should have got rid of this dude a long time ago. Yeah, that's this a isn't huge like problem. That's culture. A huge like problem. you're sitting up covering this shit up. Don't cover this shit up. Yeah, you give a I mean, guy you, you, you once you or get, twice, and you got him the fuck out of there. Yeah, and you keep hearing re, he keep hearing the reiteration of that um the one apple spoils the bunch. Yeah, or or what's what's the one that keeps going around? Um, if you have a hundred a hundred cops and ten of them are bad, you got. You still have you don't have uh, ten bad cops. You have a hundred cops because they don't hold them accountable. Uh, but it's still the culture, like you said. Culture, that culture's got to change, and I get it. It's a hard job, but what's going on right now, dude? It's it's wild. Um, one of the things yeah. I wanted to talk about was I don't know what the demographic in New Mexico is because I know that's where you're at. Yeah, but um, I know because you're where you work for. A, gov- a government agency. Yeah. You got people from all over the place. Um, are you seeing people change their attitude or showing their true colors in a <laughs> sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's funny. All right. So where I'm at is already like a very like um like friendly town. So people speaking stuff when they see you and stuff like that. It's not like San Diego where people just walk right past you. Uh so it's already friendly. But man, it's gotten like almost uncomfortable friendly. Because these people see what's going on. So on the internet, it's going one way. On the internet, it's going like, you got these dudes sitting there, like, grinding their heels in, like, yep, yeah, you know, fuck Black Lives Matter. Like, it's all lives matter. Where I'm at out here, these people are, like, almost walking on eggshells when they see me, bro. 
is is wow. I could feel like the like more eyes. Hmm. Almost like <laughs> almost feel like how <laughs> it's gotta be how like if you're if like a terrorist event happens and you're like in 